Harlem Renaissance Party, written and illustrated by Faith Ringgold. Dedicated to all the people I knew growing up in Harlem in the 1930s. Come one, come all, to a party today in Harlem. Celebrate the great men and women of the Harlem Renaissance. Everyone everywhere is invited. It all began with a great big message written across the sky. Oh, can we go, Uncle Bates, I pleaded. Now who can resist a party invitation written in the sky, said Uncle Bates. Come on, Lonnie, we have a plane to catch. People from all over the world were rushing to get tickets to Harlem. Will my favorite poet Langston Hughes be there? It wouldn't be a party, Lonnie, without Langston, said Uncle Bates. As soon as our plane took off, Uncle Bates got to talking with that proud look on his face. Lonnie, he said, we'll see musicians, poets, novelists, painters, activists, philosophers, and scholars. Wise men and women, giants standing tall above the crowd, sharing dreams of a better life for all black people. In no time, we were walking on 7th Avenue with the giants of the Harlem Renaissance. Just like Uncle Bates said, I could hear the drumbeats of a parade blocks away. Uncle Bates, I cried. I know, Lonnie, he said. A parade is coming, but let's eat breakfast first. Wells Restaurant has the best fried chicken and waffles this side of heaven. We're meeting my friend Jack here. Hi, Jack, called Uncle Bates. Meet my nephew, Lonnie. Tell him how it feels to be Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight boxing champion of the world. It feels great, Lonnie. As great as eating fried chicken and waffles smothered with hot buttered syrup. Dig in. After we eat, we'll look for Langston, your favorite poet. Mmm, mmm. Breakfast was so good. While we ate, all kinds of people, and giants too, came by to say hello to the champ and to meet Uncle Bates and me. Being with the champ made me feel like I was a champ too. We stepped outside just in time to catch the Marcus Garvey parade. The great leader looked like an African king, all dressed in purple with gold tassels and braids on his jacket. Everyone was cheering wildly and waving Garvey flags. But when Marcus Garvey began to speak, you could hear a pin drop. I stand before you, a proud black man, honored to be a black man, who would be nothing else in God's creation but a black man. I want you to feel the same way. The crowd roared. The celebration was on. Uncle Bates said, W.E.B. Du Bois at the Crisis Magazine will know where we can find Langston. There's not much Dr. Du Bois doesn't know, said Jack. He was the first black person to get a doctorate from Harvard, and he was the founder of the NAACP. If brains could bo box, he'd be the champ. Jack danced around, throwing a few punches in the air. W.E.B., said Jack. My friend Lonnie wants to be a writer like you and Langston. I want to be creative like the writers and artists during the Harlem Renaissance, I said. Yes, said Dr. Du Bois. We black folk had a new desire to create as though we had just wakened from a deep, deep sleep. Is that why we want to call it the Harlem Renaissance, I asked. That's it exactly, said Dr. Du Bois. Now go find Langston. Maybe he's at the Africana Art Gallery, said Dr. Du Bois. Let's go see what they are showing. On the walls, we saw paintings by William H. Johnson and Medavo Warwick Fuller. Henry O'Tanner and Aaron Douglas had pictures. Sculptures by Mae Jackson, Augusta Savage, and Richmond Barth were on pedestals. It is more exciting to see art in real life than in books, I said. Your Aunt Connie taught me that this art shows the true beauty of black people. It is as if we were invisible before these artists painted us black, said Uncle Bates. Madam C.J. Walker's beauty school wasn't far from the gallery. Madam Walker invented a secret preparation for hair straightening and became America's first self-made female millionaire, said Uncle Bates. She had a 34-room mansion built just for her and a beautiful apartment in Harlem. She gave lots of money to black colleges and other worthy causes. Madam Walker waved to us from her convertible. Before long, we were in front of the Harlem Opera House. We walked up to Paul Robson. Mr. Robson, you are a great singer, actor, and athlete. How does it feel to be so famous that everybody knows your name, I asked. I just want to be a tribute to my people and give good boys 
like you, Lonnie, a chance to grow up to be strong men. Mr. Robson, everyone applauded as if he had just sung a song. Here come two ladies, pretty as can be, said Jack. Hello, I just met you at Wells Restaurant, I said. Miss Florence Mills, you played on Broadway in Shuffle Along, and you, Miss Joe Baker, went to Paris to become a star. The Harlem Renaissance didn't just stay in Harlem. No, Lonnie, said Uncle Bates. The Harlem Renaissance went wherever the giants took us. The ladies told us we could catch Langston at the Schomburg Library. Nora Neal Hurston, Zora Neal Hurston, excuse me, had just finished reading a story from Mules and Men, her, fa her collection of Negro folktales. The crowd roared with laughter. Then I heard a soft voice repeating the words, my people, my people. It was Langston Hughes reading my favorite poem, I whispered along. My people, dream singers, storytellers, dancers, loud laughters in the hands of fate. When I finally had a chance to talk to Mr. Hughes, I almost forgot what I was going to say. My name is Lonnie, Mr. Hughes, and I would like to know where you get ideas for your poems. I get my ideas from jazz and the blues. I get my ideas from my people, said Mr. Hughes. Do you write, Mr. Lonnie? Yes, I guess so, I said. Then you are a writer, said Mr. Hughes. I went away feeling like a giant. Carter G. Woodson and Alan Locke were in the audience too. Mr. Woodson, I said, you started Negro History Week. Now it is Black History Month. I want to thank you for that. You're quite welcome, Lonnie, said Mr. Woodson. And Mr. Locke, you collect beautiful African masks. I have only seen them in books. I wish the kids at school could meet all my new friends, said Lonnie. I can't wait to tell Aunt Connie how proud you have made me today, said Uncle Bates. You are the littlest giant of the Harlem Renaissance. On the street, people were rushing into the Savoy Ballroom. Come on, you all, I feel like dancing. Let's show Lonnie how to cut a rug, said Uncle Bates. A man in tattered clothes said, not everybody is dressed up, but everybody is welcome just as long as they can dance. Someone said, say that again, man, and everybody hummed, mm-hmm, uh-huh. Miss Mills and Miss Baker were the first ones on the dance floor. Come on, little Lonnie. Let us grown folks show you how to do the Charleston and the Foxtrot. The party was really getting hot. Fletcher Henderson's band was playing Tuxedo Junction. Louis Sachmo Armstrong was on the trumpet and Coleman Hawkins, Hawkins was on the saxophone. All the giants were dancing up a storm. We danced and danced till I got sleepy. Time to go home, Lonnie, said Uncle Bates. Can we do this again, I asked. Lonnie, a party like this happens only once in a lifetime, but you will always remember meeting the giants, said Uncle Bates. I hugged all my new friends. Keep dancing, they said. Langston Hughes said, don't ever forget you're a writer, Mr. Lonnie. We headed for home, but the party was still going strong in Harlem. Uncle Bates, now I know why the Harlem Renaissance is so important. Why, Lonnie? Because black people didn't come to America to be free. We fought our, for our freedom by creating art, music, literature, and dance. Now everywhere you look, you find a piece of our freedom, Uncle Bates said. Like Marcus Garvey, I am so proud to be black. One day, I will be a famous writer just like Langston Hughes. You see, Uncle, ba Uncle Bates, I said. I learned from the giants of the Harlem Renaissance. That night, I had a dream that I was still at the Harlem Renaissance party only I was a famous writer at my very own poetry reading. Langston Hughes and all the artists and writers were here. Alan Locke brought an African mask. Aunt Connie and Uncle Bates were there with Jack Johnson. I was the proudest, littlest giant of the Harlem Renaissance. The end. <laughs>